Just to give uh, uh, what we're seeing right at the bottom of that image are the uh, shadows from the atomic force microscope cantilevers. So they're all ready for operation. Um, we've multiply imaged those. And if we zoom in to the particles that we've collected here, uh, this is a particle about 50 microns across, about uh, the diameter of a human hair, a little less than the diameter of a human hair. And we see that in this case, we have both a greenish uh, part of the particle to the top. Uh, the supposition at the moment that that could be olivine. We know we see olivine elsewhere on Mars, but at the moment we can only go by the color. Um, below that, we see uh, the very characteristic orange coloration that we see in the Mars soil. And if we move the camera just a little bit, the optical microscope just a little bit um, focused out from the substrate holding this material, we can see that that clump is not, uh, the, the, that particle is, is a clump of even finer particles. And we see that in the background. Particles right down to the resolution of the optical microscope. So we're going down to uh, the individual pixels which are four microns across. Okay, we, there's some other particles of interest as well. If we look at the, uh, if we zoom in to a particle which is in the bottom right hand corner here. And this is a glassy particle. If we look at this more closely, you see it's, it's more rounded and uh, this may very well be a volcanic glass. And it is quite possible if we look at the full image again of our substrate that what we are looking at here is a potted history of Martian soil. We have the, uh, the hard particles, um, these black glassy particles that over millions, even billions of years have slowly been weathering down, becoming iron enriched that gives the, uh, the, the orange material its characteristic color. And we're seeing that process captured on the variety of particles that we're looking at at the moment. Now, this isn't the first set of uh, particles that we've been able to image. Uh, we already uh, had our substrates out to just passively collect material that was kicked up while the Phoenix lander actually came down with its retro rockets, somewhat blasting the material into the air. And we were ready to capture that. And if we look at the next slide, we see a comparison on the left-hand side of what we caught during land on the right-hand side of what we've got from the scoop. And the scale bar at the bottom is one millimeter across. What we see in the, in the dust fall is a whole variety of very fine particles, right down to this four micron resolution um, on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have what the soil has looked like once we brought it in. We can see that we've indeed got just what we were looking for, which is this, this field of particles well separated so that we can say something about their shape. But very importantly, we see that the clumping that was very evident when we were digging at the level of the scoop in the, in the few top centimeters of the soil is even repeated down to the tens of microns that we're seeing here. We're, these are tiny clumps, maybe made out of thousands of particles apiece now. Um, but there's cohesive forces. The, the, this is obviously a very sticky material right down to the finest scale. Okay, um, and finally, if we look at the next, we've got a, a whole variety of substrates that we look at. We look at six substrates at a time. And this particular substrate we fabricated at Imperial College in London out of silicon, and it is a series of holes and pegs of different spacing. And the idea of this substrate is that we are able to tightly grasp the particles for future analysis with the atomic force microscope. Again, you can see the shadow of the atomic force microscope beams at the bottom of that image. And so what we have on the third strip from the left is that we've been able to capture a very good variety of particles. Uh, these are pegs which are five micron spacing just about the size of the larger mass particles that we'd be looking for. And of course, we're very eager now to zoom in 
probably another factor of 40 times. So we can extend that animation a little further, Peter, in a, a week or so, and, and see not just what the particles look like um, as maybe a little fuzzy blob, but we'll be able to, we hope, look down at the detailed substructure of those particles and actually see below the resolution of our optical microscope. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we now have Mark Lemon, who is going to be talking about what the stereoscopic imager has been producing from uh, its uh, look around the lander. Uh, thank you. The uh, surface stereo imager has been very busy every sol helping to contribute to making Phoenix a, a success. Uh, it is The camera is a tool both for helping to guide operations. It provides sort of our uh, hand-eye coordination. It helps us pick where to use the arm, what to do, how to sample. And it's the way that we survey the site and connect what we see to other things that we know. Uh, Peter and Tom showed examples of some of the images that SSI has taken in the course of guiding the operations. I'd like to show one more example. Uh, this animation uh, came down today, uh, earlier in the day, uh, Sol 18, and it shows the robotic arm poised over the trench uh, at the commencement of digging operations, as, and as this animation plays, it will... I'm sorry, I'm waiting for the animation to actually play. Uh, the animation, <laughs> the dig occurred in three parts over the day. The SOL-18 was our first serious dig, actually using the uh, RA digging commands as opposed to the uh, sample acquisition commands. And those commands were issued three times in the course of the dig over a two-hour period. Uh, during each of those three digs, the SSI took seven images uh, spaced out over the dig. Uh, so I think we'll just be able to show you later uh, what is happening in the trench during that time. We use that to monitor how the trench evolves over the course of the dig. What stuff do we uncover, uncover and then bury? Uh, how does the ice change its appearance once the digging is over? I'm sorry, I shouldn't say ice, the bright material. <laughs> and uh, I think what we, saw, what we see in the animation is uh, very intriguing, and in particular at the end here we see a fairly stable uh, look to it. There are very, very subtle changes deal, uh, related to the changing illumination, but no other strong variation. And you can see that the uh, RA is just whizzing by in some of these uh, frames, so you see it blurred a little bit. Uh, so this is a very dramatic way, I think, to uh, visualize what's going on on Mars, uh, what went on on Mars just a few hours ago. So SSI, in addition to its operational role, is our, our tool for surveying the landscape. It's the camera that can sit back, uh, look at everything in color. It has human-like depth perception. Uh, so we have been taking advantage of that and acquiring our high-resolution color pan. And I'd like to show you uh, the scene that we saw on Sol 16. Uh, this is looking at the landscape toward the west. We use images like this to uh, understand the landscape as a whole. We can uh, zoom out to the horizon and see distant features that are observable from orbit. You can see the hills fading into the dust in the background, um, as well as a small number of large rocks. Uh, that is exactly what we expected to find uh, in the area that we were targeting for the landing. Uh, you can see some of the polygons in the distance as we pan closer to the camera, but then this also connects us to the uh, stuff that we're actually sampling. So you see here in the scoop, the sample that um, on Sol 16 when this picture was taken was just about to go into the microscope. Uh, so the dirt that you're seeing there is the dirt that uh, Tom just showed in the microscope. Uh, and that's the robotic arm camera poised looking into the scoop there and the very slightly dusty solar arrays at the bottom of the screen. So a, su a successful mission really requires understanding the context for all of the observations that we take. We are acquiring samples, putting them into the instruments, and coming up with a detailed understanding of a very